Australia, the land down under, is a land of constant challenge and constant discovery to its people. In this program, we'll meet some of those who unlock its mysteries and probe its wonders. Pilots who This is the controlled burning of Queensland's cane fields to eliminate deadly snakes. Now, it's even more dramatic to know of one killer that lurked here and nobody knew. Now, we do know. And that's what makes the burns even more significant. And it's what makes Ram Chandra so important. In Australia, we have 130 species of snake. At least 20 are dangerous, and five or six are certain killers. A lot of snakes will slither away from us, but not this one. It's recognized as probably the most aggressive snake in the world, the Taipan. Its strike is deadly. Until three years ago, Everyone believed it was only to be found on Cape York Peninsula, the northern tip of Australia. Snake showman Ram Chandra decided the books were wrong. Ambulance men had been losing about four patients a year to snake bite and didn't know why. When they learned at last that the Taipan was not just another brown snake, they contacted Ram Chandra. Ram was using Taipans as part of his show and helping to educate medical workers. Then he began milking them to provide for the anti-venine which became the first hope of survival for the victims. This is the type N anti-venine. This is what it looks like. Before we had it, we had to deal with some rather terrible symptoms because the Taipan would be the most dangerous snake in the world. It contains three separate forms of poison one is a neurotoxin, which causes paralysis, loss of vision, hearing, that kind of thing. One is a hemolysin, it makes the blood turn to water, more or less. And the other is a coagulant, it makes the blood clot within the blood vessels. Uh, must have been 1954 that we got our first specimens of uh, antivenine. The first um, specimens actually came to me so that I could give some protection for Ram Chandra. I was always very impressed with Ram's personal courage. In the days when he was working with Taipans, there was no Taipan anti-venine available, and we knew that if he got a decent bite, it would almost certainly be fatal. Without the antidote, death usually comes three hours after the strike. Ram worked with Taipans well before the existence of the medical safety net that he helped to provide. Many other snakes had bitten him, and he had partially lost the use of his legs. But he never lost the drive to provide the antidote to the Taipan's venom. The half-inch needle-like fang shoots a hundred times the venom of the feared brown snake. Ram applies his careful, knowing touch to the Taipan's head, and those needles squirt violent and painful death. Usually, it produces 150 milligrams, but there's one report of a massive 300 milligrams. So, from this jet of death, a promise of lives to be saved. His first and greatest fan was 11-year-old Cairns schoolboy Bruce Stringer. When the snake struck his knee during morning recess, he saw the tail. The description fitted the brown snake. After 14 hours in hospital, Bruce was near death. The regular antivenine wasn't working. As a last resort, the doctor tried the new Taipan antidote. Within a couple of hours, the symptoms faded. Ramchandra had been right about the presence of Taipans well south in Queensland. 
and the anti-venine he helped to produce had saved young Bruce. I thought to myself, I'd risked my life all those years, and, uh, you know, uh, it seemed that, that all my dreams had come true because the child had lived. Bruce was so impressed, he became a doctor. Ram, in fact, became the second to have his life saved by his own work when he was bitten a couple of months later. In this part of the world, there's no limit to the challenge and adventure for those who seek it. There's so much more to see and so much more to do, and we'll tell their stories in our next program.